And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello there, my friends. The Game Boy Geek here. Ooh, back in World War II, there was a thing called the Manhattan Project, which was the research and development for the atomic bombs and such. Well, today we're going to take a look at a worker placement game from Minion Games called Manhattan Project. Two to five players. Now, the box says 120 minutes, although I've never seen it take that long. For us, it's, it's usually, you know, maybe an hour, hour and a half tops. Uh, we've never gone two hours. Um, it's a worker placement game, very interesting, with multiple workers, different types, a lot of different innovations in this game, and it's one that you're going to want to check this out and stick around. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's go in the laboratory with our engineers and our scientists and our laborers to check out how it's played, and I'll show you a meet you on the other side. So here we're set up. We actually have a four-player game set up for Manhattan Project. It is a worker placement game. You have one main board here, and then each color is gonna have their own board that they can build buildings in. Uh, but there's multiple workers here. Um, there's three different types of workers. Let's take a look at those. These are the gray color of contractors that anybody can use, but just to show you that the, the faceless overall guys are laborers. They can pretty much go, go with the, 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 the normal type of tasks. The guys with the hard hats and the clipboards are engineers. They're gonna go in other different types of things where you need an engineering type person. And they do with the beaker and the glasses. He's a scientist, go figure. And he can do specific things like building the bombs. Up here you can see what those look like in the red color to see the difference between your colors, workers, and the general pool of contractor laborers uh, and workers that other people can use. I wanna show you the great quality of components that come in this game. These little workers that you're placing up and down and thing all day long, they feel nice and really thick and fat in your hands. In fact, here's the thickness of them in relation to my finger, that they really feel nice and big and fat and they're really nice to hold. Great component quality here with Manhattan Project. Now, unlike having rounds in a normal worker placement game, this game just keeps going in an interesting fashion. For example, on your turn, uh, you're either placing workers or retrieving workers, and those are done on your timing, not rounds timings. Now, on the main board, you can place one worker only on the main board uh, for the most part. So I could place it pretty much anywhere once and pretty much take that action. And after that, I can place as many workers as I want on my own color board if I have additional buildings there that we can buy at this shop. So let's talk about some of the different places that we can we can go here with our with our workers. So here I start at the universities. Uh, essentially, you, you know, you place a worker here, anywhere on this board, you, you, you pay anything that's there, if there is one, and the output's always on the bottom. So essentially I would go here, and I could take three more workers from, um, fr from, you know, the pool. And in this case, since they're laborers, I would take them from the contractors. Here, I can get an engineer, and, you know, I could get them from my colored workers, uh, which is a good thing, or the contractors. Here you get a scientist, here you pay three and get either engineer or scientist. Now keep in mind, at the beginning of the game, all you have is four of these laborers. There are four scientists and four engineers of your own color that you sort of have to build upon at the beginning of the game and start start getting, sort of building your, your clan, if you will. Now the mines, this is places that you go to get what's called yellow cake. It's one of these, the resources up here, that's one of the main resources in the game used to build the, uh, uh, the bombs uh, because that was the, the, the fun term of the scientific ore that's used uh, for the uranium and plutonium. So this is the mines, the spots here pretty much where you might use uh, money or a specific engineer to get you a certain amount of yellow cake. And this spot here, you would get three and everybody else gets one. So here you're kind of getting that resource. Um, the construction site, this is the one place where more than one person can go. Uh, so essentially I could be there and uh, somebody else might be able to put maybe a contractor guy there. So what this allows you to do is buy some of these buildings to put into your own sort of factories over here. Now remember, you can play one worker here then as many as you want on your buildings. So it's good to get a lot of buildings and they cost a different amount as they come out. As we see here, we have costs. We have two, three, five, seven, ten, fourteen, twenty. 14, 20. When one is bought, uh, essentially, I could, you know, get this, put it in my uh, my factory here, and then all these slide down to one cheaper, and then a new one comes out. Now, this is cool mechanic because the newest one that nobody has seen is going to be the most money, and it's going to be who's going to pay the most for it. 
And these, somewhere on the board, you'll see these spots with the little red uh, dollar signs. Anytime somebody goes there, interestingly enough, a little bribe goes here in the ashtray. And then when someone buys the cheapest building, they automatically get all the money in the ashtray. Cool little thing to, to get the cheapest building out. Also notice that the first two buildings, instead of paying a laborer, you can pay an engineer and get it for free. So this is where you go on a construction site to get all these buildings to then build up your factories. And again, once you've placed one worker here, say you have 10 buildings over here, you can start putting all your, your workers on your buildings over here. The design bomb station needs one scientist, one engineer, and allows you to get the, the blueprints to designing a bomb. There's always one more than players in the game. So we have a four player game, there's five of them here. Let's take a look at this and see how this interesting space works. Now there's two types of bombs in this game. There's the, yellow, the red ones, which are, you need uranium, and then there's the blue ones that need plutonium. And as you'll see, they'll, they have different ranges, meaning this would need four uranium, seven plutonium, and so on. They also need certain workers to be able to build them. Like this one needs seven plutonium and needs two scientists and three engineers to build, but the point totals are pretty high on that. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So interestingly, when you get a design bomb, essentially the person that put their people there gets to pick up all these cards, pick one, and it drafts. It passes around clockwise to all the people, each person taking one, and then the person that put their, their meeple on, the, their worker on the... Uh, the space gets the final one, so they actually get two. It's an interesting drafting mechanic uh, where they'll get their first choice and they'll get the last one that's available. And these are essentially the bombs that you're gonna be trying to build. So let's take one of those bombs a little closer. One, another thing I love about this, they all have cool little names. Over Easy, Big Bertha, Fat Chance. So this is a uranium bomb. You would need a scientist and an and a, uh, engineer to build it, and you need three uranium. It's gonna give you 12 points. So how you get plutonium and uranium are these spaces here. Essentially here, you need to place a scientist and pay two yellow cake to get one plutonium. So if you go there uh, with a scientist and you pay two yellow cake back to the, the, the general supply, you get to move the plutonium marker of your color up one. So I'm at a level of one. If someone went here with the scientist and paid three dollars and had two yellow cake, they would essentially have one uranium. So they would let's say it's the, uh, the yellow team there. The yellow team would move up to one. And so that's essentially how you're building it. Now look, it's a worker placement, right? So nobody can go here till somebody retrieves those workers, which makes these buildings here very important uh, for later on. So once this is uh, sort of, uh, you have enough, let's say this yellow person ended up getting three uranium. Anytime on their turn, if they still have the right amount of uranium or plutonium and the right amount of workers, they can basically place them on their card and build the bomb. And in this case, they would get 12 points. Now you get different amount of points to win the game depending on how many uh, players are playing. Typically it's anywhere between two and four bombs depending on how many people you're playing with and what point totals are. So after you've built anywhere from two to four bombs, the game's gonna be over uh, depending on the number of players. Now after you've built the bomb, you can also uh, load the bomb. We see a track up here with some bombers and some different numbers. So let's take a little bit of a bigger look over here. Now your bomber track can be uh, up here like this. And then uh, let's say we've, we've got our bombers up to two. We would need to load it. So we take it down from two to one and then pay one dollar it's loaded. And once it's loaded, we actually get five extra points. So this now turns into a 17 point bomb that I get to keep there. That's essentially how you score in the game. It's very focused. The only way you score points is by building bombs and loading them. A couple more spaces I wanna show you about. Uh, aircraft, so if you put your person here, you get to get two more fighters. And here are two more bombers, and they would go up one, two, up one, two. So what do these do for you? Well, we've learned what the bombers do. They allow you to uh, uh, load bombs, but they also allow you to bomb other people's buildings and slow their thing down. So here we have fighters and bombers. If I place a, a worker here on the airstrike spot, I get to attack somebody. Now, if I have two fighters and my opponent has less, maybe one or zero, I could take this down for each one that I am uh, you know, above him, and that kind of ruins and takes away his defense. Think of this as your defense. So if my opponent only had one and I had two, I could go down to one, and his one would go down to zero, and he has no defense. Then I could bomb uh, a building of, of my choice on his, and what would happen is, let's say uh, you know, someone did it to me, I had a building, uh, they could do up to three damage when they bomb me, and maybe they do all three damage on one building, but maybe they spread it along to other buildings. And what this means is I can no longer use this building until I repair it. So it's a way of slowing other people's progress down if they're getting too far ahead. So normally I could go to this factory with one worker 
to get either a fighter or two dollars for an output but if it's damaged i can't do anything until i repair it repairing i could go here on the spot and get and pay five dollars and i can repair up to three damage points so i could finally clear that building other people also get to uh, repair damage points too but they have to pay some additional money to do so one last spot on the board i want to show you is this espionage spot really cool spot uh, let's say i go here and pay three dollars I move my espionage up to one. This means I can go into one building on this turn only that I've gone here. I can pay, I can go, I can go into one building of an opponent and sneak in there as an espionage spy. So I could, if I was yellow, go on the red person's building now and use their building as long as there's nobody there and this place is open. So using this espionage allows you to utilize other people's buildings and is a huge strategy in one of the game. It makes it a lot of fun. You really have to pay attention to what other people are doing. One last aspect I want to show you about the point totals is we, we built the uranium bomb earlier. There's something different about these plutonium bombs. You'll see they have two different scores where the uranium bombs only have one. When you build one of these bombs and you have two scientists and two engineers and five plutonium, and you take the plutonium down because you've used it, uh, essentially what you have here is an 11 point bomb, a smaller number. Now anytime during the game, uh, if you like to, you can implosion test one of these bombs. And what that means is, see these implosion test counters? If you're the first person to implosion test, you take this six pointer in replacement for this bomb because it's been tested and blown up and this goes to the bottom of the card. So essentially I'm giving up 11 points, but I'm getting six back. Now, as you see the third, second, third and fourth person that goes there, it's less advantageous to do so because you're losing more points by doing that. But what happens when doing this is once I have this counter and I have this implosion test counter, any time after the, after, uh, during the game that I have done an implosion test, if I build a plutonium bomb, I will always get the higher score. So it's sort of like pay me now, uh, you know, I'll pay a lot now to get a lot of points later. So this is a very interesting strategy and thing in the game where the bombs are quite different between uranium and plutonium, depending on whether you want it. And even when you get a plutonium, you have to decide whether you want to uh, implosion, test, implosion test them or not to get the smaller numbers or the larger numbers. So essentially you're going around the board, trying to gain resources, trying to gain workers, trying to espionage other people, trying to maybe defend yourself, trying to bomb others, uh, and trying to get the yellow cake so you can put scientists and get uranium and plutonium to finally be able to build bombs and the focused idea is this is the only way to score and the first one a certain amount of points depending on the uh, the number of players uh, is the winner. All right, Manhattan Project. This game blew me away. <laughs> All right, well that was kind of lame. But anyway, it really did. It, it This is a fantastic game. Now, I typically do like worker placement. It's one of my favorite genres, but I must say, I want to go on a limb here and say this is one of my, if not my favorite worker placement game that I have now. This, re this didn't replace, but it's gone up so high on my rung that some of the ones that I used to really love is not going to get played as much anymore because of this game. I love this game. Components, amazing. The box, the quality, great. The rules, oh, they're gorgeous and they're written very clearly, very easy to understand. Good job on the rules. Components are awesome. Um, okay, so what, what about the mechanics? Oh, okay. Even though this is a very focused design, meaning there's like, you think there's only one path to victory. Oh, we build bombs and we score points. The one with the most points wins. This must be too easy, too focused, too, you can't do what you want to do. It's the opposite, oddly enough. Even though there's one way to score points, which is building bombs, you've got two different types of bombs you can do. On one of them, you can choose to implosion test or not. So already it starts to spawn out. Then you've got all the different ways to get there. Am I going to be early in the game getting more people getting more scientists and workers and different ones, or am I gonna be jumping at the spots that other people don't want? Am I gonna be buying buildings and stocking up on those early? The idea of having your own buildings is good. I like that, it's, it's a cool idea. But the idea of being able to go to the espionage and use other people's buildings, oh, that, that mechanic in that game was awesome because it just changes the whole strategy of seeing what people are doing. And then the idea of attacking. Now I can see where a lot of the people that just love these Euro games without a lot of interaction will probably hate the air attack part of this. So if you're a Eurogamer and you hate it when somebody can mess up your plans pretty directly, you might not want to play the airstrike version. Now there's some variants where you can take it out altogether or play with just one spot. So if that's you, you can still dial it down. So don't write this one off. Um, if you do like direct contact, which I actually do, this game allows you to do that. There's some actually some negotiations you can do with that. It's awesome. So there's a lot of spots on the board. I really loved how it took a different approach where there's not rounds. And at the end of the round, you all gather your people and someone's going to a spot to get the first player for next round. 
there's no rounds. It's like, it could just go for infinite. You're never sure when somebody's gonna pull up their workers and that's it. That, then it opens up the board and you're not quite sure. You think where they're gonna go. A lot of times they're on spaces that you wanna go so you're holding back, you, you have the amount of people and you're just waiting, waiting, waiting for, for them to pull up so you can just pounce and get that spot. Because if you have all your guys out and then they pull up and you don't have enough, then you've lost your chance. So there's a lot of timing, interesting timing involved with when to play your workers, when to pull them up, which spots you're gonna go for. Um, so there was a lot of decision making here. Uh, do I sup do I set up my defense so I can you know bomb people later? Do I just go after the yellow cake and the the big factories and the mines, or do I just go? You know, it's just I loved it. Tons of decision making, tons of watching what other people are doing um, to see whether you want to use their buildings or not, uh, seeing which bombs they're building up. Overall, I just thought there was just so many good mechanics in this game. It keeps you hooked. It makes you think. I'm gonna be coming back to this one over and over again. It's one of my favorite work and placement games. If you haven't checked this one out, it's a disservice. You've gotta check this thing out if you even remotely like work or placement games. If you've never played one before, this is a good place to start too. Cause it's not too ridiculously hard, too deep. You could probably get in it. Anyway, check out Manhattan Project. Great job, Minion Games. So much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>